Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So this is my current watercolor art journal. It's an Arteza watercolor sketchbook, square format, 8.5 inches square. And I've been working on it for about two months now, sketching almost every day of my baby surroundings at home and also going walk for a walk sometimes. So these sketches takes me about 15 to 40 minutes for this large one. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how I composed this page in full detail. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start with this complex looking organic cabbage from a farm market. So I, in the beginning, I sort of envisioned the size and placement of the cabbage on the blank space. And now I'm ready to draw the outline. So now I'm drawing this leaf on the side, it's kind of foreshortened, so you can only see its view in squished form instead of a full leaf. This drawing process is very abstract. And now I'm starting to draw the middle part. This is almost a uh, straight on view of this leaf. It looks much fatter than the ones on the side. And this piece of leaf underneath another piece underneath, and only the tips are showing. Now I'm drawing this leaf on the right-hand side, around, wrapping the, around the back, and another piece on the back, and this piece of leaf on the very right-hand side, again, this foreshortened, squished view. So if you look at a cabbage or other leafy greens like lettuce, you're going to see that each leaf is in different positions. The ones on the side look more squished and thin. The ones in the middle are straight on and they look fatter than the ones on the side. So now I am adding these main details for the leaves on both sides. It takes a bit patience, and again, I'm kind of um, summarizing what I see instead of copying what's there because it's not really possible to copy every single detail that's on there. Just drawing my impression of the forms of these veins. It's very much like drawing trees or bushes. Same idea like drawing tree trunks, branches, and twigs. A lot of organic things are very similar forms. And if you want to get better and more confident at drawing trees and bushes, then what I would strongly recommend you to start drawing leafy vegetables. Because the organic forms are very, very similar. The trees are just hundreds or thousands of times larger than cabbages, cauliflowers, and other leafy greens. They're just different in sizes. And now I'm getting looser with the veins for the leaves on the back. Because in real life, our eyes, when we're looking at one object or scenery, we can only focus on the details of one single part that our eyeballs are aiming at. We can't really see every single detail on an object or scenery without moving our eyeballs. Okay, so now I'm ready to paint with watercolors. So as always, I like to wet the white spaces first with clear water so the uh, color can spread out easily. The first layer is a mix of lemon yellow and light green, very watery. This is kind of like the lightest tone that I observe underneath the many layers of green tones. This is the lightest color that I sense. 
wet on wet, second layer, a mix of varying green and yellow ochre or medium yellow, depending on how you how you feel. So as I hinted in my art talk videos, that you don't have to mix colors or draw lines in exactly the same way as I do. Because everyone sends the world and the things around us in different ways. So there's so many ways to mix an organic green for cabbages or lettuce. So my way is one of the many, many ways to do it. So as you can see, when I'm painting this second layer, I'm using pretty thin and choppy brush strokes, skipping around the vein lines that I drew because I want to create a pop-up visual effect for these veins. They're not flat. Third layer, an even darker tone of green mixed with Viridian Green and Burnt Sienna or Brown. Now there's more sense of depth. Again, use the same brush stroke technique. I'm not pushing down very hard. It's kind of like letting the brush jump on the surface of paper with thin and choppy brush strokes skipping around the vein lines to leave sort of highlights to create a sense of pop-up effect. And keep adding more texture brush strokes for the leaves on the side. This is a really fun process. The cabbage is looking even more three-dimensional. And again, we don't really need very um, complex painting techniques to do good paintings. And for these leaves on the back, I'm getting less precise because I want to focus the details on the foreground part, the leaves in the front part. I'm also using an even darker tone of green around the edges between each leaf just to separate them by creating sharp edges. Okay, and just doing final polish here and there. And finally, I'm gonna paint the shadow very loosely. Again, wetting the shadow area first with clear water, mixing in ultramarine blue and purple wet on wet and just let the bleeding go darker around the edge and that's it and after a few minutes i decided to paint a red magenta platform underneath the cabbage so it looks even more three-dimensional it's standing on the on the white space better with the platform and i also wrote down the time and a little note for this sketch so that's the first sketch on this journal spread. Let's see what I'm going to sketch next. Okay, so I went upstairs to my reading room and I'm thinking about using this space above to sketch the gorgeous evening sky with clouds outside. So the sky never repeats itself every day and that's why I never get tired of sketching skies. So by thinking and observing at the same time for a couple minutes, I decided to do a panorama sketch without the frame this time. So I'm starting to draw the outline of the forest, starting somewhere on the left hand side, moving on to the middle, and a little bit to the right hand side, all the way to the end of the page. And now I'm starting to draw the middle and lower part of this sketch, the rooftops. So I see the house structures as very simplified geometric forms like triangles, trapezoids, squares, and these windows. I like coloring them with solid black. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a break from drawing. I wanna paint the sky now because the colors are changing very fast. 
I was worried that、um, the colors might fade away after a few more minutes. So I want to paint first before finishing drying. So I wetted the area first with clear water, and now I'm just adding these orange red stripes as I observe, blending on some lemon yellow. Putting on cerulean blue, mix it with a little bit green, so it looks a little bit turquoise. An even stronger cerulean blue mixed with ultramarine blue around the horizon, based on my feelings from observation. Wet on wet ultramarine blue, these thin strokes to show the feathery texture of the clouds. As you can see, now I'm switching to a thinner brush, the Sakura water brush. The brush tip is thinner for finer details. And now, just grabbing some magenta red to add on to those the pieces of clouds, but not too much. I don't want to stir away too much, or else it's gonna blend with the ultramarine blue, and the color won't look clean anymore. Okay, now I'm. Coming back to drying, to finish drying the rooftops. Observing the angles carefully, add them on. So one of the purposes or goals of drying is to simplify the complex things that we see into much easier to manage lines and shapes. And this is done through seeing, thinking, and then putting line works on paper. And in this process, many kind of styles can develop by different people because we all see and understand the world in different ways. And the style that we draw and paint can be very different. Okay, I think that's it for the drawing part. When we're drawing, we don't have to draw every single detail. I'm gonna leaving. I'm leaving a lot of blank space on the right hand side because I don't want to add too much details that kind of distract the viewer from seeing the beauty of the sky. So now I'm kind of doing the underpainting for the houses and everything else, and painting these trees in the distance with a mix of orange and yellow, blending on. The leftover green that I use for the cabbage, radiant green mixed with a little bit brown or burnt sienna. Just painting very loosely. I think these trees can be much more darker than the sky, just to add more contrast. Painting these rooftops with dark brown. Pretty straightforward, and for these houses and rooftops, I'm not really over elaborating on the details. For the colors, I'm just adding the second layer on top of the first layer of light wash, and that's it. Just keep it really simple, because the main focus is the sky area, and the areas closer to the sky, like these forests. Needs to be denser to show more contrast between the translucent sky and the dark forest, and some final shadows. Using leftover colors here and there. And I'm keeping the lower corner on the right-hand side blank, just to make it really natural. It doesn't have to look like a perfect rectangular picture. This way, it's like it's merging pretty naturally onto the page. And now I'm going to sketch my afternoon coffee and a piece of cake. And I'm going to sketch these over the space here. So, kind of visualizing with my finger gestures before I start drawing. Okay, now I'm ready to draw. I'm gonna start with the cake package first. 
So it's kind of like an irregular rectangle shape with wrinkles on it. Focus on the contour outline first, and then adding these distorted package details. This is the uh, the shape of a, of a prism. I'm writing the letters on it. And just adding the cake pieces inside. It's kind of like a granola bar with the little pieces sticking together. Pretty random shape. And now I'm going to draw the cup behind. It's the shape of a cylinder. I started drawing the opening and the two sides, the handle. Now the rim with broken lines and the inside of the coffee. Now I'm ready to paint with watercolors. Just adding on yellow ochre for the cake and the coffee because they have similar colors. The red of the package is reflecting onto the cup. And painting the package with less water, more red magenta paint. As you can see, I left a tiny streak on the edge as a highlight. Adding a bit of shadows inside this plastic package. Shadow for the cup. A little bit brown to show caramel on the cake. Even more dark shadows. This side of the package is darker, so this way it looks more three-dimensional. Even darker. Okay, so finally I'm using the leftover colors, like a blend of ultramarine blue and purple red to paint the shade part of the cup, inside and outside. There's a bit of gradients on the surface of the drink. Adding bits of shade color for the handle too. Shadows on the bottoms of these two things, darker around the edges. And just let the two layers blend together, nice and smooth. And here is a finished sketch and the look of my art journal spread so far. I just have one little tiny little space there to fill. Let's see what I'm going to do next. And here's another sunny evening. The clouds are looking so puffy. And I will sketch it in my art journal in the last little space right there. As you can see, I drew a little frame. So the page looks more organized with everything. So after drawing the little rooftop on the right hand side, I know the height of the forest in the distance, a little bit lower than the rooftop. And just quickly drawing the other rooftops in the distance on the other side of the street. And the windows, tree forms using very simple lines. And now I will paint because I think the colors of the sky is more important than just drawing more details. So just wetted the sky first with clear water and adding these streaks of orange, red orange, nice and loose, and then turquoise. Just let the colors blend together. I don't try to over stir it or else it's gonna look very muddy with the warm and the cold colors merged together. It's being very careful. So actually with watercolors, we could lay cold colors on top of the warm colors. As you can see what I'm doing right now, but I'm not really stirring it or else the colors won't look that fresh anymore. And now just adding the orange and the brown rooftops. Just putting on the dark shade of green for the forest. Quickly add the colors for the uh, house forms. Darken the forest so there's more contrast between the sky 
and the solid things. And here is the finished art journal spread. It took me two days to fill it up. So on day one, I sketched the cabbage and the panorama view of the sky. And on day two, I sketched my afternoon tea and snack and the small square evening sky view. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you very soon next time. Have a great day.